Hello and welcome to my first impressions review of the Triumph Street Twin 900. It is so tiny! Which is now going to be known as the Triumph Speed Twin 900. I have a short window to test ride a motorcycle like anyone else. I don't get bikes loaned to me for lengthy spells. And I take the insurance success seriously at some dealers, so you won't see me thrashing the life out of motorcycles I don't own. So join me to find out what I like and don't like about Triumph's best-selling motorcycle. So I have wanted to test ride this motorcycle since it was launched in 2016. It's taken some time to finally get on one and absolutely tiny. It's the last year of it being officially called a Street Twin, as it moves to being called a Speed Twin 900 to more align the product range naming conventions. This bike I'm riding is in stone grey colour, which to be honest looks far nicer on the bike than it did on the webpage. It's a 900cc parallel twin, so something I'm used to, if not the actual displacement size. I say this because this is the closest I've ever been to riding a 1000cc motorcycle, as I have never seen the need for commuting to have such power to sit in a traffic jam or filter below the speed limits. But it only produces an output of 64 brake horsepower, so less than some of the motorcycles I've owned recently. My overall is it feels smaller. Although it's got a bigger engine than I remember my CB100 feeling. Or maybe that's just because I'm so used to the, the, the huge seat on the X-Max. So let's cover the specs I think you should know as a base for the classic naked motorcycle for commuting. Seat height 765mm, width 780mm. Fuel economy 68 miles per gallon depending on variables. Wet weight 216 kilograms. Brakes, ABS as standard, weather protection, nil, and storage, nil. This is a classic retro in the true sense. It's how you imagine a motorcycle should look, but with a few modern touches. Getting on this bike is ridiculously easy for myself, and I just couldn't get my head around how small the bike felt to sit on. If it wasn't for the weight of the Street Twin, you would have thought you were sat on something much smaller in capacity even the Moto Guzzi V7 feels bigger than this. It's a motorcycle you sit on and upright. Its ergonomics for myself felt almost spot on, but I didn't ride it for hours, and so it may not be perfect. Again, again, riding the motorcycle was easy once you were moving. The balance and poise made me sure I was on something almost as small as my old Inzuma 250, and this was around the small village I collected it from. All the switch gear was in the expected places and easy to operate with no confusing multi menus to scroll through. This bike does have riding modes but are simple to select and clear to see on the single instrument cluster. Unlike the rev counter, this is a digital number and for my liking, it takes too long to read that I turned it back off. This doesn't feel like a motorcycle that you'll need to redline or rev hard to get the best from it anyway. Note that my left thumb lined up with the horn, not the indicator switch, which again is not my personal preference, but I'm sure it could be adjusted. The clutch on this bike is so light compared to anything I've previously ridden, again adding to that feeling of a much smaller motorcycle. There is no uh, sixth gear, so five's as high as it's going to get. The brakes on this motorcycle are well above a performance level that I'm currently used to on the Yamaha X-Max 300. The feel and stopping power are far superior, but then it should be for a motorcycle twice the price. This motorcycle is fitted with a single headlight, and like with all test rides, I cannot say if it's of any use whatsoever on alternate roads. If you're in this motorcycle, let me know in the comments. The ride is probably the smoothest I've rid ridden ever. The handling is neutral but assured. The ability to get off the line and moving quickly was something of a surprise. I was definitely lured into thinking this had mild manners. It can quickly accelerate and produces its power much slow down the rev range to say the Tracer 700 with a similar engine power and configuration. It's not designed in reality for going up and down motorways but has no trouble doing so. The la but the lack of weather protection in the UK may get tiring. It's like having a helicopter inside my crash helmet. The 
which is ridiculously light. See how much it makes my hand ache. Let's take this for a second. It does have a lot of available accessories, including a touring screen, which may protect your upwards also if fitted. There is no storage to speak on, so you're going to have to add that separately as well. Holy moly! The Triumph Street Twin 900 has a unique selling point for a commuter or high mileage rider in the fact the service intervals are set at 10k miles, not 3000 or 6000 like most motorcycles. Triumph obviously pride themselves on being a luxury brand, and I can see why from riding this, their entry level classic motorcycle. It is so small. No issue. Uh. Let's just have a look quickly at some pictures of this motorcycle. Box standard, no extra exhaust. That just sounds amazing. I mean, I don't know what it's 0 to 60 speed is, but it's quick. Take it down the twisties. Um, well, I haven't been down here in a long, long time. So fingers crossed, I'll we'll see what it's like. There's very little of that force from the throttle that I experienced on the, uh, the motor guzzy. This isn't a road I know well, so I will keep the speed down. Back brake works a treat. Oh, this is a new section of road. That's over the road I've just been on. Sorry, just over 60 miles per gallon. Balance is pretty good. Well, for me to do that on a bike I've never ridden, and just stand it on its wheels without putting my feet down.
one's bright red. I'm not quite sure what it sounds like. I might try it in a minute. Gear indicator's a bit small. No, nothing on that dash. Can't be red. Standard uh, bike hall. There's so much power to get you into trouble with this bike. <laughs> I actually didn't think I'd like this colour, but it actually looks really nice. Interestingly, I remember me way back to the shop. could really fall in love and ha own one of these but I couldn't own it for commuting it really would be a summer fun bike personally I'd love this bike as my Sunday best motorcycle out on the B roads enjoying the scenery not as an everyday commuting tool would I buy this bike if I could afford to? Maybe. But it's one I feel I would need to care for and clean, dry and polish all the time. And there's still other motorcycles to ride in this category. hardly feel a lump in the road. This makes the X-Max feel uncomfortable in ways. And more comfortable in others. I don't really want to give this one back. Beautiful day. What a beautiful day. River, power station, church. I'm heading back to give it back because if I don't, I don't think I will. For me, it feels like it's twice the bike of the uh, Motor Guzzi. It's Got its own character. It's a bigger engine. They both do about the same to the gallon. Thank you to Piddock's Triumph for letting me test ride this motorcycle. You can find them at piddocks.com forward slash triumph. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this or found it useful.